Tom here from Lawrence Systems and Happy New Year. And I'm happy to say here in 2023, I think we're going to keep continuing the discussions around password management. The recent LastPass breaches that happened towards the end, or at least we found out about them towards the end of 2022, has it in the news and also in people's minds, which I think is great. I want people thinking more critically about security. But that leads you to the next question of where should I store my passwords? And Bitwarden, big fan of it, been using it for years. That's my preferred place to store it. But KeyPass XC comes up a lot. And I want to do address that because I think it's a good password manager. So too long, didn't watch. Yes, go ahead and use it. Let's talk about what they have in common. First, both store passwords in a vault securely, which is great. They've used strong cryptography. And I said the date at the beginning, not just because it's a happy new year and it's 2023, but as of right now, as of the recording of this video, I don't know of any flaws in either one of these in the encryption I use that would allow someone to get in. Next, both have good browser integrations with Chrome or Firefox. The browser integration I think is really important because you wanna make sure the URL you're at matches before it fills in. This is something people should always be suspicious of and where password managers can help with phishing links where you found a link someone sent you, for some reason you decided to click it and it doesn't autofill. That's odd, wonder why it's not autofilling. Oh, the domain doesn't match because of domain typos and squatting. It's one more extra layer of protection, I think, by having it integrated in the browser. Also convenient that when you're storing and typing passwords and creating new passwords for forms in the browser, that you can save it right back into your password manager. So as you create these unique passwords, they get saved right in there smoothly without having to go back and forth and copy and paste alt tab between a desktop app. Speaking of desktop apps, both are cross-platform and have desktop apps. Now, KeePass XC is only really a desktop app, whether it's Mac, Windows, or Linux, and is, as I said, offer the browser integration versus the way Bitwarden works is going to be a server that it talks to, whether you host that server yourself, and I've done a video on self-hosting Bitwarden, or you use Bitwarden's backend, which I think is perfectly secure because they have a zero-knowledge backend, so it's encrypted before it gets synced over to them. Either way you use it, the synchronization is occurring, and a desktop app is either local as in KeyPassX or talking back out there. Now, in case you're ever wondering with Bitwarden, what happens if the server can't be reached, whether you self-host or use them, it'll cache the last known copies of the password. With KeyPassXC, it has to have access to the database file that you create when you set up KeyPassXC. So there's a little nuanced difference in there, but as I said, both have desktop apps. Now, both can store TOTP alongside with your passwords, which I don't think is a great idea. Um, this is something maybe for a lab, it's okay, but once you get out in the real world, there's a few exceptions. I have a couple forums out of convenience of not wanting to put it on my phone. Yeah, I probably saved a couple forums with TOTP in there. So worst case is someone got my password manager, someone breaches it, well, and they went to some of the forums that I go to, they might have that ability to TOTP login if they were to take it. I don't know how you know, good that is, but I belong to so many forums, having that many of them on my phone for storing it, that would be a pain to, you know, manage all that. So I'll let you guys roast me in the comments on my choices for that. Now, this is where Bitwarden goes a little beyond what KeyPassXC does. Bitwarden free version offers synchronizing of your data. With KeyPassXC, you got to do that yourself. They also use Bitwarden Send, and the free version lets you send text files only. This is a really clever system. I've done a video on it before that allows you to send someone a specialized link that you can control and maybe give them a password to view because you want to send a block of text in a secure way. You can say view once or view many times or whatever the parameters are or let it expire based on different parameters you put in there. So I think this is a really cool feature to share some piece of knowledge in a text format. If you buy the paid subscription, you can go ahead and send them files as well in a secure format and same rules apply. Now let's go a little further, Bitwarden Enterprise, which is a paid offering. They offer full event log auditing, SSO, and API access. Now, when it comes to the event auditing of the logs and the way I work with my staff, being able to know who accessed what when and have an immutable log for that is really important for security when you're managing it for a business and a group of people like I do. So this is one of the reasons we like the Bitwarden with the Bitwarden Enterprise, and it's why KeyPassXC wouldn't be a fit within my company. Now, KeyPassXE can be easily synced, as I mentioned. You can use a file synchronization tool such as SyncThing, Dropbox, or whatever you prefer. Now, this is that split, as I said. If you're a home lab and you're just doing it yourself, KeyPassXE is fine. Matter of fact, synchronizing it with a couple computers because you really want to make sure you back up that file or synchronize it between the different systems you have. 
I think it's a great choice. And you're right. If you said, hey, I use HeapSXE, I don't see the purpose in a password manager like Bitwarden, which is like a really common comment people replied to me on the Bitwarden video on. For individual users, I don't see this as a problem. For someone like myself running a business, or if you just have a use case that requires you to create a shared collection between multiple people and be able to keep that up to date with shared passwords and shared credentials in there, Bitwarden's a better choice for that use case. Now, if you're probably wondering why would sites need to share, shouldn't everyone have their own individual users? Yes, I wish that was the case. I wish everything was, you know, simple like that. Um, unfortunately, dealing with many of these sites, that's just not how that works. Sites are always behind because someone may have already asked, what about the new pass keys and some of the other features that we're seeing come out? The industry's ability to create new standards versus the industry's ability to adopt new standards are always opposed to each other. Companies aren't quick to adopt and change the code on the back end that allows all these systems to integrate them smoothly. Now, we could be talking in a future now that's not January 1st of 2023, where I'm completely wrong and all this is irrelevant and this video doesn't make any sense anymore because we've come up with this incredible new way of authentication. And, but you know, we are in reality right now, January 1st of 2023, where we do need all these integrations still. And that's why I made this video. So leave your thoughts down below about KeyPass XC or Bitwarden, which one you like. But I still think KeyPass XC, if I was just an individual and didn't have to deal with a bunch of other people needing to share passwords or credentials and information with them via a secure method like Bitwarden, I think it's a great tool to use. Let me know which one you use down in the comments below or whatever thoughts you have on this topic or if there's some other topic you want me to cover or head over to my forums for a more in-depth discussion. Thanks.